On today's video, I want to tell you why you should not start your design process within Webflow. That's a huge mistake. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, what is up? My name is Ron Sego. Welcome back to Flux. And today I want to talk about Webflow. You know, a lot of you are so passionate about Webflow that you're, you think that if you know Webflow very well, if you're an expert in Webflow, you should actually get started in designing your website within Webflow. And I've been seeing these debates all around the internet. And today I want to share why I think it's a bad idea. Do not start your design process within Webflow. There's three main reasons and we're going to break it down and I'll show you examples. So what is why shouldn't you get started with your design process within Webflow? Well, first of all, you need to understand that Webflow is actually a development platform. Yes, it was built for designers. Yes, you don't have to learn code, but you're basically visually developing. And when you're developing, you have to use logic and structure and you're actually executing on your design idea you're building it out but when you're working with other software design software that were supposed to be used for design that can be Figma XD you know sketch one of these then the goal of these softwares is to design now what is the difference between to design and develop well part of the design process is to very rapidly experiment with different design solutions right you want to try this font and then you want to try this font. you want to try this layout and then that layout and you want to do this very very quickly to see what you like the things that you like you go ahead and then you end up developing them in webflow so let me let's jump into an example so you can see how this comes into play. So this is our Figma file with the design of our recent website or a page on our website. And this is the same page actually built within Webflow. Now let's say this design is not finished, but I do want to experiment with it. And I want to think, well, maybe this is the right layout or maybe this is not. Maybe I want to change things around. Maybe I actually want to take this and try this kind of centered layout. Maybe I want to do this. I don't know if it's nice. Maybe I want to make this kind of a full full page with this video here in the middle. So these things, as you've saw, it took me like a second to go ahead and move things around because there is no logic. It's just a visual canvas and I can move things around. Whether as, let me undo the ugliness that I did here. But if I would go here into Webflow where these things are actually structured, then you see that the way that these things are next to one another is because they're inside of columns, right? So this is column number one and column number two, and they're inside a container to make sure that they don't get to width. So I can't literally just move them around into the center. I would have to probably go and wrap them around and start changing some styles here. So to do the same experiment, let's call it design experiment that I just did in one second would probably take me a minute or even a few minutes just to see something. And then when I will say, like I just did, oh my God, this was so ugly. Then I'll have to undo tons of steps that uh, that includes a whole restructuring and tons of new styles on our website. This just takes so much time. And when you're designing, when you're in the process of experimenting and trying things out because you're not really sure what the final layout will look like, you want to move fast. You want to see things as fast as possible. And Webflow is just not very efficient for this. Webflow is super amazing. When you have your layout, when you've decided that this is what you want to build, it will be super easy and efficient to go ahead and build this out in Webflow. But to experiment and to come up with the layout within Webflow is not so efficient. Now, the second point, and, and it comes back to this, is that as part of your design process, you will tr try many things and you will experiment. And then you will want to compare them one to another and say, well, what if this we do this or this? And I'll give you an example here. Um, let's say we, we made duplicate of the artboards and we were testing out this component, right? So what would it look better? Would it look better with this layout or maybe a carousel like this? And it's so easy to put them on two artboards and compare them. Now, if I would go into Webflow and actually go ahead and develop and build all of that, it would take me a lot of time. And then I would also have to I don't know, duplicate maybe another page and build this whole thing. 
I won't be able to see them side by side. Maybe I'll have to publish the website or open up new tabs and then resize the window. It's just not ideal for seeing design options. And of course, you might want to see a lot of things one next to another and try multiple options. So again, Webflow is not really idea for experimentation. It's really ideal for when you know what you want to build and then you go ahead and build it. Now, the third point is also very important. You're usually not designing within a vacuum, right? You're either designing within your team or you're designing for a client. But in any case, feedback is usually a critical part of that process. And so when you're working with, it doesn't matter if it's Figma again or XD or whatever, usually there's kind of a commenting system in place. And when you have your whole website like this, it's really easy to go ahead and leave comments that your clients might you know, want to give you feedback on one design element or another so that you can fix stuff. If you're building your site on Webflow right now and then you're publishing it, the process of giving feedback on your design when it's a live website becomes very much more complicated. What Now they're either going to have to take gazillion of screenshots to tell you what they like or don't like, or they will have to record a lengthy Loom video or something. But giving feedback on your published site is going to be way, way more complicated. So to sum up these three, three points, right? Speed, comparing one design iteration to another, and then getting feedback. Because of these reasons, I think that the best thing that you can do is start experimentation with your design on your favorite design software. And when you have your design approved and your layout ready, then you move ahead and you develop it with Webflow. And of course, if you want to learn how to most efficiently develop it in Webflow, make sure you check our link below to learn how we teach you to use Webflow with the Webflow Masterclass. Hope this video was helpful for you to clarify that issue about why you shouldn't get started with Webflow initially. And we'll catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.